Welcome to the State of Wyoming Subject Matter Minute, where we cover a wide variety of subjects related to State of Wyoming employment. This information is for you and me, the state employee. From hidden benefits to systems and processes, we'll make your job easier by giving you the lowdown, the how-to, and hopefully entertain you a bit along the way. And now, today's Subject Matter Minute. Hello and welcome to our little variety show at the State of Wyoming called the Subject Matter Minute, where you come for information and end up cringing at my humor. See? Related, somewhat related, one of my favorite lines from a song is by the Gin Blossoms, and it goes, if you don't expect too much from me, you might not be let down. I tell my wife that all the time. She thinks I'm hilarious. Oh, I noticed something else when I started recording. I remember or do you remember way back in the early sessions, one of them, I said that if I own a shirt that needs ironing, I get rid of it. Well, apparently that's not true. Please enjoy me in my wrinkly splendor. All right, let's get to the task at hand. Last month, we covered the effects of human resources consolidation on you and I. And what was the one takeaway? Okay, today I'm gonna cover weather closures. We all love a good snow day, right? We hope it snows just enough to shut things down so we can stay cuddled up in bed, have an extra cup of coffee, cross country ski to lunch. And while it almost never happens, we always hope. I remember, grow I remember growing up in Lander uh, and listening to the radio in the morning anytime it snowed. You know, this was before web pages and emails, right? And we had to get that information from the radio. And it was such a wonderful thing when you heard those words. Well, every once in a while, the state gets shut down due to inclement weather. The recent Snowmageddon event in Cheyenne is a fine example. There was some confusion during that time. A ton of us were teleworking for the first time and just weren't quite sure what that meant for the snow day. Well, sadly, for those that telework full time, or are scheduled to telework on a weather closure day, the snow day is no longer. And worse yet, if you are unable to telework because of snowbound children or something like that, we may be expected to use annual leave. This depends on expectations set by your management. You know, many of these situations are circumstantial, so be best if you can to clarify as much as possible beforehand in your telework agreement. One of the stated reasons that the state expanded the opportunity to telework is so the government can stay open on inclement weather days, right? And honestly, the reason for snow days was to keep people safe and off the roads. And since you can now safely work from home, that's no longer a thing. Now wait, there's more to say, but I need to pause for a second and thank Jenny Wacker who helped me with all this information. She is the queen of teleworking because she was tasked with heading up the committee that wrote the new policy. Now, do not blame Jenny for ruining the snow day. It was not her fault. I think that for those who are teleworking full-time, it's pretty straightforward. But if you're working teleworking part-time, intermittently, or temporarily, you need to be sure of your supervisor's expectations. Right. The setup should work for both the employee, for us, and the state. And there are some scenarios where this could become unfair, and that's not okay. This is, why, this is one of the reasons why all teleworkers are required to have a signed telework agreement in the SABA system. Okay. Expectations can be set up in that agreement so there's no surprises and no confusion. If you expect to get a snow day when it snows, on a day that you're supposed to be in the office, then work that out with your supervisor and get it in the agreement, just to make sure. The bottom line is that this should be common sense. If the state closes on a day that you're scheduled to work in the office, you should get a snow day. If you were scheduled to telework, you should work. However, everyone's supervisors are different, and like usual, these things are at the discretion of the agency and or director, so be sure of what his or her expectations are. Since there are some shades of gray here, we've created an FAQ to try to cover most questions. 
go to the Telework Wyoming webpage right here. <laughs> okay, and scroll to the bottom, you'll find a link to that document. I've also included a link in the show notes. While it sucks to not get a snow day, I think it's best to think of it as a trade out. Telework allows for flexibility, no commute, eat your own food, do a load of laundry, work in your pajamas, all while getting in a day's work. So I feel like if we get to do that, we also get to work on snow days. And whether you agree with me or not doesn't matter because them's the rules. Okay, so what if there's a power outage? Good question. If a power outage or loss of internet occurs at your telework location for longer than two hours, you, we, may be required to go to your office location. Now, if the office location or the primary work location is closed due to the weather, we may be expected to use annual leave. Okay, we need to coordinate with our supervisors as some of these situations may be eligible for administrative leave instead. Okay, I say may because why? <laughs> as always, these decisions are at the discretion of the agency and or director. For those of you who do not telework and are not emergency personnel, you still get to sleep in on those rare snow days. So enjoy them. All right, that's it for today. Everyone have a fabulous week. I'll see you next month on the Subject Matter Minute. You have been watching the Subject Matter Minute with Matt Nagy. Please help us out by subscribing. And join us next month when we'll cover another topic of interest for all State of Wyoming employees. Again, thank you for joining us on the Subject Matter Minute.